I started overclocking about 15 years ago when I got my first system which was a AMD Duron CPU, Duron 800 and then I think I upgraded to a 1700 Thunderbird or something similar to that and uh, maybe me I just always wanted to go faster so I got to the limit of overclocking with ambient cool uh, well with air cooling first then I went on to water cooling and then from there I went on to um, phase change cooling essentially as it was at the time so like Mac 2 GT and Acetec Vapor Chill like the the machines that you could buy from stores online um, I didn't post any results I just did it did it basically for myself ran benchmarks and posted the scores not on hardware bot or anything but just on forums uh, then I, I carried on overclocking and gaming but not um, not taking it too seriously but just doing it as a as a hobby if you like and uh, got into weight training and took that a lot more seriously and became you know fairly fairly high up in bodybuilding in the UK uh, and then at the same time when the uh, ASUS ROG forum started I started posting a few results on the ROG forum uh, this was about the time when Z77 was just about to come out um, and I was contacted by an engineer at ASUS quite a famous overclocker called Shimina or Peter Tan and he said he said he was impressed with the results that I'd posted uh, would I do a review for the forums and he sent me a, a ASUS Maximus 5 Genie board and said oh you can do a review do whatever you want to do with it benchmarks whatever etc etc and I said to I said to him that I had some sub ambient cooling he said oh yeah go for it with that see how you do and I posted up some good results with the standard of cooling that I was using at the time uh, and and basically from then on in I started getting more and more serious with what I was doing with it so I have cascade cooling and I have liquid nitrogen cooling uh, and I I was uh, posting on hardware bot quite regularly and moving up the rankings uh, quite quickly so within 12 months of starting I was like uh, ranked in the top four or five in the UK and the top 20 on the extreme cooling uh, section on hardware bot that wasn't the pro overclockers at the time just the extreme cooling then uh, again I continued to move up till I was number one in the UK and in the top five on the extreme cooling uh, section and it was then I was approached by Overclockers UK and Case King to start coming doing uh, research and development for a top, a, line, a top line of systems and also to further my overclocking to promote uh, them as being the absolute excellence within the community uh, for overclocking. At the moment I'm currently now ranked uh, number two in the world uh, and the Pro League. Uh, our Overclockers UK team is currently top of this uh, this. Uh, quarters uh, pro cup uh, I won the 32m uh, at the Computex uh, 32m overclocking at the Computex championship against 20 others uh, the world's top overclockers and uh, I'm currently you know I have world records in seven different benchmarks mm -hmm. uh, including Vantage uh, 3d mark 11 um, Pi fast for example so that's that's my current standing at the moment not really mm -hmm. only stability mm -hmm. it's not really a score that people on these machines are that interested in mm -hmm. they're more interested in uh, Cinebench in 3D Mark uh, Firestrike Extreme Firestrike 3D Mark 11 Heaven Heaven Valley that kind of that, that's what they're more interested in because they're more very high end gamers mm -hmm. uh, rather than professional people as such that are buying the machines at the moment I mean the most successful selling machine is the big one here the Supernova uh, which is the most expensive machine and the most heavily uh, heavily armoured with hardware and cooling uh, but that's the best selling one and it's mainly to gamers mm -hmm. I really like Haswell uh, because well I mean I've got several world records with Haswell so, but because I I, I mean in terms of uh, pr uh, improvement from 3770 uh, in terms of improvement for 3770 obviously clock for clock it's a little bit better the memory controller is qu quite a lot stronger you know if you're into memory overclocking you can get uh, memory stable at 3000 megahertz 2933 megahertz stable whereas that would be impossible pretty much on on um, an ivy bridge uh, 
the memory bandwidth is a lot better. Um, clock for clock, it's better, but the the thermal limits of the chip on ambient cooling are, are, are not not so good. You need chips that are going to run at very low voltage so that you don't hit problems with with uh, throttling as you overclock. I think that's the main problem really with Haswell and the, the variability within batches. So you need to find a good batch if you're going to be seriously overclocking them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do. I do like them because I enjoy uh, 32, the 32 M benchmark. I enjoy PiFast, uh, 01, 05, 06, which it, the chip's very strong. You know, you only need 6G to beat uh, uh, an Ivy Bridge at 6.8. Mm. On 01, you only need 6G. Mm. And I have uh, has I have Haswells that'll do 6.7G. I posted the results on only on Monday. So I have fast Haswells. This system here is based around 2011, yeah. The, the CPU in it at the moment is actually a 3930K at 5G. But when I get back to the UK, uh, back into R&D, that's going to be upgraded to a 4930K, which will be overclocked to 4.9 on the stock profile and then 5G on mm. the uh, high fan speed profile. Um, we'll have 266 megahertz uh, Corsair Samsung uh, IC memory in that, which will be tuned at like C9 at 2600, like 9, 12, 12, 21 at, at 2600. And that machine then will be on a Rampage 4 Black Edition motherboard, which I helped to uh, launch in San Francisco at IDF, along with the 49, uh, the, the Ivy Bridge CPUs with, with Intel. I was working in conjunction with both companies. And then that system will also have four R290X GPU. Mm. Because um, for for AMD GPU seem to scale better with the drivers than for uh, in Nvidia. Mm -hmm. There's more, more, a lot more point to the fourth card with AMD. People can have what card configuration they want with this system anyway. Well, they can have any three or above. You know, less than three, then they're, it's one of the other systems. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so that's the that's the planned upgrade plan. But this one at, at the moment, uh, 3930K at this very second. But a, a customer buying it could obviously have a 4930K if they wish. But I, because they've only just come out with their CPUs, I haven't got a massive amount of very good bin CPUs. Mm -hmm. I've only got three. I've only got three. I think it's difficult to make the, the CPUs with the extra cores and threads uh, to run at the same clock speed uh, at the same time. I think they're refining the process and then they move it onto the enthusiast socket from the mainstream socket. So the four core eight thread, that being the mainstream socket and then the X socket being the, being the enthusiast socket. I think that what they do is refine the pr process and then move the, move the CPU over. For example, if you, if you have an Ivy Bridge eCPU you you move it down to one core, seven gigahertz is easy. Mm. Is easy. That was never easy on has on on Ivy, normal Ivy Bridge on the normal socket. Mm. But now I think the proceed, the process is much more refined. The memory controls on Ivy Bridge are stronger than what used to be on Ivy Bridge two. You can do DDR two nine three three. You can do DDR DDR four thousand quad channel. Quad channel is a very mm. you know complex uh, memory controller. Uh, I, I mean, in terms of performance, obviously it'd be better if they were the same, the same uh, architecture. Um, but I, d I don't think that's currently possible. I think they need to keep refining, mm. you know. That's what I personally think. And, mm. and also, uh, I mean, Intel are way ahead of AMD. They don't have anyone to push them to keep releasing better and better. So I don't think from a marketing point of view or from a performance point of view they need to release anything new mm. you know they don't need to bring Haswell E to the table yet there's no need Ivy BG is very strong mm. in comparison to what AMD have got well of course if if the performance of the AMD CPU 
was very close to all the same as an Intel CPU, then of course that would be an option. I mean, the ethos behind the 8-pack CPUs is to be the absolute best that they can be at the time within the given price bracket. Um, and at the moment, I don't believe that there's an AMD CPU that can compete with Intel uh, for, the, for the power user at this level. You know, when you're supplying two or three very high end graphics cards, uh, a lot of the resolutions uh, that people are playing at or uh, working at uh, need CPU power because the graphics cards are actually not the bottleneck, the CPU is. Uh, and therefore the CPU needs to be as strong as possible in the APAC system. But if AMD actually caught up with Intel or surpassed, of course they, they would be immediately integrated into the APAC system. The APAC systems are continually evolving, as you can tell from what I was saying, you were, saying to you earlier. This one here will be upgraded as soon as I get back to the office. Uh, and so on, that will filter down the range. The 780 Ti is out now, so the cube case down there, that will move to 780 Ti. Uh, and so on and so on. So they're, they're always going to be at the cutting edge and as much uh, at that as possible. So if AMD uh, brought out an excellent CPU, of course that would be an option or maybe even surpass Intel and be the de default option if the CPU was better. Um, that's the ethos of the systems, just to be the best. Okay, Ian, thanks for visiting PC Games Hardware. Uh, yep, thanks for inviting me here to show off the systems and I hope uh, people can overclock theirs just as far. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.